Well, today on Nation, a window cleaning podcast, we're talking all about scheduling, systemizing and how to make it more efficient, how to get more work out of a day, and more importantly, how to make more money with it. So if you're in the service business at all, make sure to stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. <laughs> What's up? Hey, if it's your first time here, you got a lot of catching up to do. It's 200 and like, you know, 50 episodes, um, all uh, on YouTube, anywhere podcasts are. Uh, a ton. We've not missed one episode in four years. And that's a lot of content. So go back, watch everything, listen, comment, whatever. And if you are one of the OGs, if you are one of the cool kids, that means you've watched every episode and you, you know, let me put the orders in for you. Well, I just want to say thank you. And if you want to be one of the cool kids, which you probably already are, but if you want to be one of the cool kids, be a cool kid. Let me put your order in for you. Uh, shameless plug, I am a rep for windowcleaner.com and that's what I do all day, every day. I have people who let me put orders in for them, ask questions bidding, pricing, websites, whatever you need, I am here for you. So please let me be that resource for you and let me put orders in. Everybody who lets me do that, it's really genuinely amazing and I really want to appreciate uh, all of you just putting it out there. But I want to be your rep too. If you're new and you've not ordered through a rep, let me do that. 862-312-2026. That is a cell phone. So please, please shoot me a text. Say, yo, everything's in my cart. Put it all in there. As long as you're logged in, I can see it on my end. And uh, we could build an amazing relationship. Now you got a guy. Now you got a guy. So anyway, thank you, thank you, thank you very, very much for that. And by the way, on a side note, um, I'm putting up the new batches of stickers that I normally don't show you. But if you're watching this on YouTube, I'm going to show you the, the newest stickers uh, for American Window Cleaner Magazine. Uh, boom, there's one of them, yes, uh, and another one, so there you go, sneak peek, but if you haven't yet, get yourself a subscription to AWC Magazine, that's American Window Cleaner Magazine, because why not have two shameless plugs, but this a magazine is amazing, it's to your door shipped every single month, it's all about window cleaning, there are posters, there are stickers of course, every single issue gets a sticker sheet, and you want to be part of the industry, you want to be one of the cool kids, get a subscription. Go to awcmag.com and get that. So anyway, okay. Man, long intro. I apologize, but I got to put that out there. Uh, I've had people actually call and send me something like, hey, I want to send you like money because you've helped my company. Like, do you have Venmo? Do you have uh, Patreon? All that stuff. No, no, no. Dude, all I literally want is like for a ton of magazine subscriptions. Uh, and I want to put orders in. That's literally what I do. So uh, if you ever want to help, that's one way to do that. But I appreciate everybody. Anyway, just want to put that out there. Because I do this same spiel every single show. And I don't know that all of you understand how absolutely valuable you guys are to me. So uh, anyway, okay. Well, that's what we're doing today is we're actually talking about systems in general. Um, we're talking about uh, scheduling and systemizing the scheduling. Now, I want to kind of do a series of the systems and different systems in different kind of ways, diving in a little bit more. And by the way, if you guys ever have ideas for show or content, please do just shoot me a text, be like, show idea and tell me. Because it's hard coming up with this, but I want to do a little mini series all on systems. So scheduling and a bunch of different things. And that's what we're starting off with today because it is the early stages of the season, right? And because it's the early stage of the season, um, we have to plan the scheduling side of things really, really tight. And if you plan it right, you can get more work done. Uh, not only can you get more work done, but you can get it done more efficiently. And like I said, make more money doing it because you can kind of tighten things up. Uh, but there's really kind of five things, five tips. I try to keep in fives. I don't even know why. Well, fives, I guess it's in, after my spiel in the beginning and the closing, it's like 25 minutes of content, right? So maybe five minutes a piece. I don't know. But there's five different things I want to talk about in scheduling. And this is really something that I would say most people, 
probably not you, right? Because, I mean, high five, you're awesome. But most people have problems with scheduling. That's where a big issue is coming from is scheduling. And the reason is, is because if you schedule, as you start filling it up, people don't necessarily look at the long term in their schedule. They look at the now, especially coming out of this time of season. People are like, man, I need money now. Like, yes, I'm available 9 a.m. tomorrow. Let's do this. Well, it builds the platform for uneven scheduling and it builds kind of an un, unefficient schedule, right? And that's a big problem because getting into the season when things start going crazy and you just, I mean, you're just stacking it on, you're playing Tetris. And just like Tetris, if you don't line things up perfectly, eventually it does that noise and you lose, right? And that's scheduling. Like all of a sudden it's like, oh man, I guess I got to hire more people because I'm so pushed out. Well, if you optimized your schedule, not only would you be making more money because things are tighter, but you don't have to necessarily hire because you're getting more work done. Anyways, set schedules are super, super important. I'm telling you. Uh, and I wanted to start down, start the the list, if you will, uh, is, is, is breaking down your map, your service area. People don't really do this, but in your area, and depending how big it is, you need to have multiple areas. So in my company in Wisconsin, we had two major cities that we did work in commonly and there was a drive between the two cities so you didn't want to do one in city a drive 30 minutes to city b just to get in the city what would make more sense is for you to do one day of all city a and day number you know the second day do all city number b because then you're just doing shorter trips right maybe you have five areas that you go to regularly Maybe one area you could do, you know, one day a month, but other areas you could do three days a week. You have to take that and make that your calendar. What we did was our city B was always on Tuesdays. It was always on a Tuesday because that city we did a lot of work in, uh, but there was the actual city and then there was like the stuff between the two. And that was minimally every Tuesday we were there. And every other Thursday, we were back down to that city. So as you can see, that wasn't our primary city, but that was how we scheduled things. So if someone called and it was in city B, I would look always on our Tuesday schedule first. And if we didn't have any availability, it was the second Thursday. So it'd either be Tuesday, the following Tuesday, or the following Thursday. So all you're really doing is having that push be about a week. And again, as you fill up and things are busy, I get that things change, you know, you got to hire more people, all that fun stuff. But I would always do it that way. And so I always knew that Tuesdays were a city beat. Now, if you're in a city and I don't need to drive 30 minutes between just the cities, remember there's one deep side, you know, which will take another 15 minutes just to get to that or through traffic or whatever. Now you're up to 45 minute drive, but just the drive between the two. And the big part of that is, is if I can cut out, now remember, for even numbers, I'm just putting these out there. It was a 30 minute drive. We ran two people in a truck for residential. So that one route, so that one truck on that Tuesday or Monday, and two people driving 30 minutes, that's an hour each way. So that's in two hours of round trip time, right? That's 30 minutes per tech driving there. 30 minutes per tech driving back in the city. It's two hours, two hours, two man hours. I'm paying to just drive between the things. I can get a lot of work done in two man hours. I mean, I'm you're, you're talking hundreds of dollars in two man hours, right? But two man hours just to drive from job A to B and back into the normal city. Now, say I do that once, twice, three times, four times a week, and I'm driving back and forth and I'm not building that efficiency, that's two hours every single day. That's two hours every day. And if I did that every single day, at least once, because remember, you're doing a bunch of jobs in a day, right? The trucks are all over. If I do that, two man hours every day. Think of that. It's 10 hours. 10 hours a week. 10 hours a week in just drive time because I didn't build my efficiency right. Even if it's two hours. 
What would you be able to do in the busy season with a free two hours of work? Or two hours where you're not paying guys, gas, everything else, and losing that. Now you have to work, now that extra two hours, or that even, you know, you did that every single week. Say you got that now 10 hours a week. That's like a whole day. Now you're working another day. Now instead of being a week out, you're a week and a day out. The next calendar, you're there. You're always kicked out because you have all those inefficiencies, right? So what you need to do is break down your calendar, break down your schedule, and see where you're at and what you can do to optimize that. I'm telling you, at first, it felt really weird to not have, and this is, we started optimizing. Well, the first time I optimized, I did it wrong. This is like 15 years ago. I tried, but at the time, I got lazy and we ended up unoptimizing it for another maybe two years. But when I first did it, I was like, oh, this is going to be great. The problem was going into season, I wasn't busy yet, right? And I was like everybody where I didn't really plan that year. I didn't plan very well. Uh, we had a late year, all that stuff. So all of a sudden, I'm not working, you know, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and scheduling them for the next Thursday. I didn't have that many days off at the time, but I was having like, oh, well, I'm not working today or tomorrow, but I have this job, this money that's just waiting for me to collect. I have it like a week away. But as soon as the light switch happens and now you're filling your schedule, having that set aside already when it's slow, when it was easy to do, allows you to just make that so much more efficient. All of a sudden, things make sense. You're not wasting money. And like I said, you're making more money. I'm not paying 10 hours worth of labor for nothing. I'm getting 10 hours worth of labor back. Think about it. You're making $100 an hour, man hour, right? Something around there. $75 to $100 a man hour. If you have 10 hours, that's $1,000 of lost income by doing just that drive once a day. Nuts. Nuts. People don't think about this stuff. This is the efficiencies, right? So let me jump off real quick. When you are at the top of your game in any sport or any craft or any hobby, there's always that thing, right? It's like, well, for you know, twice the price, I can get this tool that is, is even more precise. And you're like, well, the difference between the two is not that much, right? Or like a race car. If you have a race car, and you all of a sudden, you know, change one thing from aluminum to carbon fiber, it's really expensive to do that. And it's just a minimal change. But the thing is, is that when you're so efficient, a minimal change is all you can do. And it really makes a difference, right? In the beginning, when everything is bad, these little changes don't make much sense. But as you grow, if you build that foundation really, really strong, you can build a taller tower on your foundation. If you build a really crappy foundation, which most of us do, most of us do, especially the old timers, like we didn't have anything to go by. So we just, everybody was figuring it out. If you have it figured out and you're newer, or even no matter where you are now, if you start doing these efficiencies, the big thing is everything changes because of it. It's a really good one. Um, route jobs, base it on weeks, not months. Right? So some people are like, oh, I got this job once a month. No, you got a job once every four weeks. Once every week, so weekly, every two weeks, or every four weeks. Now, if you do it that way, not only do you make more money, because you got two extra cleanings in the year, right? 52 weeks. Now, again, people are like, well, I don't want to charge. No, no, it's, it's still a week thing. Like if you're not there for five weeks, that's not really what they want. They want it every four, right? But the big thing is the scheduling. If you do it every four weeks or weekly, right? So you have either once a week, once every two weeks, or once every four weeks. Now everything lines up. So if week one, you have a job on Tuesday at nine, but week two, you have a different job. When week one comes back up, those two will line up. As you're building a weekly schedule, once a week, once every two weeks, or once every four weeks is still in a weekly rotation, right? Because we're always doing either odd or every. So if you do week one is XYZ, then week two may not be XYZ because everything's not weekly. But when you get back 
two, week three, it goes back to the same bi-weekly schedule that it was on the first one. Then you go back to week four, you have the exact same schedule that you did on week two and anything that's in the monthly. It all lines up. If you do it once a month, like I do this on the 14th of every month, the 14th changes every single week. Every single month, it's a different week. It's a different day. Sometimes it's a Saturday. Sometimes it's a Sunday. Maybe it doesn't work on a 14th. So then you kick it week before or the week after. If you do it every week, two weeks, or monthly, or I'm sorry, every four weeks, on a Tuesday, every week, the Tuesday is the same day. It's always on a Tuesday. It all lines up. Building the efficiencies allow you to do that. It also allows you to have route days in certain cities because they always line up. You can always put it on that one too. Now, if say every Tuesday, again, you're in city B for route, awesome. Because when you do that, no matter if it's once a week, once every two weeks, or once every four weeks, if every Tuesday you're in that city, they will always line up and you will always put them on that Tuesday, right? Remember, we're talking about efficiencies in everything. And that is in scheduling. Route can be done the same way, but do it in weeks, not in the long term. So don't do it by months. If you're already doing it that way, it is not hard for you to kind of change that back around. So schedule that. Again, efficiencies, the more efficient you are, the more money you make, the less time you waste. And again, we may not think it right now, but all of us are going to be busy. Like season's kicking in. When I'm recording this, it's like middle of March, right? So season's kicking in. You need to build that foundation so you can stack stuff in. This could be the most efficient year you're ever going to have, you know, up to this point. Every year will get better, right? Another thing that you can do in your scheduling is schedule your commercial gigs every um, preseason. So... Hear me out. Uh, spring, busiest time of year, say, is like April, May for you in your area. What I do is I then schedule all of my commercial gigs, right? Those are the ones that get done every six months, once a year, that type of thing. Every six months, don't go once a year. But some of them, you know, no matter how good you are, maybe you can't get them into every six months, right? But what happens is, is I fill the preseason with these big jobs. Because big jobs will suck up a whole day, two days, maybe a week. And I can do those jobs. They don't care timing. But I'm going to do it before I get busy, which gives me big income coming in. And I'm also not ending one thing to, you know, um, spend it somewhere else. The preseason, I'm getting ready. I'm getting ganged up. I'm, I'm, I've got new guys hired. Guess what? Now they got a big deal, a big job to deal with. Uh, all off the season on the on the on the season itself. So now you have the option to train people. You have the option to make a big chunk of money, influx your company with cash. Because remember, they're gonna give you thirty day time, sixty day if it really sucks, right? Hopefully they pay right away. But all those is timing, schedule, everything. So when I say a lot of times everything has its place in scheduling, in jobs, I like residential for the Busy time of year frequency, big jobs, big money, nice. But then I fill the other spaces with the frequency of route, right? Route is all year round. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter if it's raining, snowing, slow, busy, doesn't matter, right? And then my preseason times when I'm ramping up, I throw in my commercial. Now I got time for everything, right? A big issue is that people don't understand that with a company, the schedule is up to you. This is your company, literally. People are so apprehensive to be the one who knows what their company is and to kind of be the person that says it. And that's a big problem, right? So what you need to do is be the person, be like, hey, uh, somebody schedules it right now. Awesome. Well, we will get your first service in uh, in, um, you know, uh, August uh, 13th. Uh, that'll be the first first cleaning oh is you don't have anything sooner well we can get you in now but that august is going to be your normal route so we can do it now and then uh do it again in august i'll get you back on your normal rotation of every six months is that does that work for you we can get this done you know if you have the time we can get this done fill in the blanks here here and here 
Yeah, absolutely. Well, guess what? Now I'm getting two services back on the rotation. It's on my schedule. My schedule, right? A lot of times people are not, they're so worried to not upset someone when the reality is, is that it's your business. You can't go to uh, anywhere, you know, um, a store, be like, oh, this is really good. Yeah. Um, I will go ahead and uh, pick up this car now today. And uh, yeah, uh, I'm going to pay you 10,000 less. They're going to be like, uh, no, the, there's a weight on the car. Like, you know, it's a six month build time. And no, you can't, you know, unfortunately, we don't have any sales. Well, nobody's like, well, then, oh, like they don't even ask, right? So don't think that you are beyond that as far as what you're doing. You're scheduling and making your company work, right? Commercial preseason, super, super valuable. Um, when is it slow for you? Find out when the slow time is for your schedule in your area and fill it with residential discounted. So residential discounted is where somebody calls you in the middle of busy season and like, hey, I want this done. Your prices are high, right? Hey, uh, here's the price. Oh man, yeah, it's a little bit more than I want to do. Or uh, yeah, we can, I'm going to search around for, hey, not a problem. You know what? I'd love to earn your business. Listen, right now is our busy season. So peak pricing, peak timing, peak everything. If you can wait until July 14th, I can actually take off another $50 because that's our slower season. So there's not going to be this high demand. Uh, it'd still be a nine between nine and 10 AM uh, appointment. If that works for you, if you're not in a big rush, a lot of times you can save a sale, save a customer by doing that. Oh yeah. And, and you know, I, this isn't a rush, right? Sometimes people just need the $50 off more than they need the timing. And now people are going to come in and be like, I don't discount anything I do because I don't discount my work. It doesn't. All right. If you're on a high horse about that, listen, these are suggestions. I'm not on that high horse. I am under the complete understanding that I know my services don't change, but being a luxury, I am charging so much money that there is margin if I need to. And what that does is it helps the customer. It doesn't lose them. It doesn't give somebody else market share. And it fills the slow time where you're not going to be doing much anyway. If the middle of July is your slow time, your dog days, right? What are you going to do? Would you rather make $0 or $50 less than normal? You're not taking away money out of yourself. You're still getting that job, right? I know we've always talked about building value, don't discount prices, all that fun stuff. That's when you're talking busy season. When you're talking about, I got, you know, 30 people calling me in one day and one person says I'm too expensive. It's not going to hit me like if one person calls me in a day and that one person says I'm too expensive because I am. I'm not really worried about being expensive. If I'm too expensive, I haven't told you my value, right? But if I've told you my value and they say, hey, you know what? I'm just, it's just a dollar thing. You're just a lot more out of that. I'd love to give you a shot. I see all the value you're adding. But for me, my luxury service, I need a little bit less. Fill it, work it for you, just like they're getting a work for themselves, right? Fill that schedule. Remember, you are the gatekeeper. You're the one who gets to fill your schedule, either good or bad. Find ways to fill the pockets. Wait, think of this. This doesn't work unless you're a 100% route guy. And if you are, awesome. But think about if you could just do like 35, 40 hours a week. That's just guaranteed every week, 40 hours. Nine to five every week, every day. I mean, you would know that in the middle of winter, you're going to be making X amount. You could plan on it. You could schedule things with it. You could just make that so much easier, but that's not the way that we work, right? Summers were working 50 hours a week. Winters were working 16, you know. So you find where the, the, the need is in your calendar and you make a workaround to build it more efficient. Now, even if it's just you, right? Even if it's just you working, you don't have techs, you don't have crews, you don't have any of that stuff. You still want to have a nice, healthy, well thought out calendar because guess what you are able to you're able to take that and 
be more efficient. Maybe you can do the exact same amount of work in 20 hours that you can in 30 hours or 40 hours. Heck, if you really are getting this done, right? Why not work smarter? In all of the, you know, ups, downs, everything of, of business, why not? Why not? Right? And um, the last kind of idea that we talked about a few times, I don't know that I could make an entire episode on this, so I don't know that there ever could be this, but is residential route. Residential route is something that people are really, really pushing now, or at least getting into, where they haven't in the past. Residential route, uh, for me, I don't know that I even invented it. I'm not saying that. I may have heard it somewhere or not. I just thought I thought of it myself one time. But my thought was, where I'm getting on this, is that what if, <clears throat> because I'm driving to people's houses, and every time you're driving, you're like, oh, yeah, we do that one, that one, that one, that one. You know, as soon as you start building stuff up, we know all these houses. What if I had something? Because when you go to a house, they're really more worried about a specific set of windows. And this is like uh, 10, 15 years ago, maybe. I used to ask people, like, what's the most, one of my questions in my uh, um, uh, pre-bidding stuff was, uh, what are the most important windows to you in your house? And I would just make sure those ones like detailed awesome clean but then i thought well everybody's got those right this is the living room where we always sit this is the kitchen where i'm always cooking these are the windows that get the gnarliest i always love the view from here look at these birds i got the bird feed blah 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 what if what if i could make it make sense to char charge you 20 bucks a week every two weeks whatever and i come and just do the outs of five windows for you or whatever the dollars translates to right Depending on routes that I do, there's certain neighborhoods I'm in, like literally, we have a truck in there every every day. They're big neighborhoods. If somebody in that said that for 20 bucks for five windows, 100% I'd do it. I'm going to be driving literally past, hop out, five windows, takes two seconds, get in. Boom. Auto drafting, I'm making $80 a month on them. And I'm still scheduling all the big cleanings, right? Residential route can fill those pockets but it takes just like regular route time to build up the route. You know, that is part of the, I don't even want to say headache, but part of the growing pains of route in general, residential or regular route. It's the time it takes to build it to something, right? So that part's super, super uh, important to build, but there's a place for it, right? And we talk now about five different things in five different aspects of scheduling that you can make more money, you can work more efficiently, you can pay out more efficiently, and potentially even fill more things in. I've just helped your schedule. You got scheduling issues, you got hiring issues, work on what you have. Hiring sucks, A-B-H, always be hiring. But... As things go, there's always times you lose grasp a little bit. Bringing back in your schedule makes it tighter, makes it more efficient, and you're going to be just happier and make more money. Yeah, so do that. You know what else you should do? You should call me or text me. More importantly, text me. I'm on the phone all day. So text me. If you text, be like, yo, Jersey, everything's in my cart. Put it in your cart. I would love that. Love that. You guys are absolutely amazing, man. I, I, uh, I genuinely, genuinely appreciate everybody who lets me put the orders in. Even if they're small orders, they're big orders. We ship free over 49. You know how many $50 orders I put in? A ton. And it's amazing. It's what I do. It costs you nothing extra, but it gives me credit. And it's like, hey, yeah, I, I, helped, I helped someone today. That's what you can think. You helped me. You helped me. Buy hair gel for my hair. I guess everybody always brings that up. Apparently. It's actually wax or putty. But anyway, maybe that's what you want to do. Um, so do that. 862-312-2026. That's my cell phone. Just save it now. Save it now. When you need something, text me. People even text me at like 12 at night. 
depending on what coast they're in, be like, yo, Jersey, everything's in my cart. When you wake up, put it in. It's like hitting go, but yet you're helping me. And it's absolutely awesome. And now you got a guy. You're one of the cool kids. Everybody wants to be a cool kid, right? I, I do. Self-indication, I guess. Uh, but, again, American Window Cleaner Magazine. By the way, this is how it comes in a uh, plastic uh, slip. Inside of here is stickers, sticker sheet. There's also a poster in every issue. It's the centerfold, actually. If you want a poster, I just think it's cool. I just think that we built something. Look, look behind me. This is all window cleaning stickers. I mean, there's a stack ladder sticker. Where is it? There. Like, I don't know. It's just super cool to me that we built a culture. I love being part of it. Uh, I love being proud of what we do because we've created this. We've literally created this industry and we've created cool kids out there in this industry. People are wearing swag and inside joke stuff and magazines. You know how many people uh, submit pictures to be printed in the magazine? People are so proud of what we do and it's amazing. It's amazing. That's one of the things American Window Cleaner Magazine really does. It's like, it's built a culture. The magazine's been around since 86, 1986. And it's changed and changed and changed. When I bought it, I changed the whole format, style, stickers, culture. And we've more than tripled, tripled the subscriber count, which is phenomenal. But I want you. I want you to be part of this too. So go awcmag.com, get the subscription. Man, shameless plugs are taking me a while today. I apologize. But either way, go out there and fix your schedule. But more importantly, be epic.